And the Washington Post is out with a new report that highlights how UFOs are not just an American phenomenon. They are studied around the world. In South America alone, four countries have government UFO programs, and the information is regularly shared with the public instead of being held as top secret. Well, joining me now for more on all of this is Nick Pope, a former UFO investigator for the British Defense Ministry, and Chris Impey, an astro astronomy professor at the University of Arizona. Welcome to you both. Good to have you. Nick. Great Britain has declassified and released 60,000 pages of UAP, UAP or UFO information. How does that compare with what the American government's done? Well, yes, it's very impressive. Uh, tens of thousands of documents, some of which were very highly classified. Secret UK eyes only, for example. And I, I wrote some of them, I have to say. I, I think uh, the UK is doing pretty well. America has done a lot in this area, but there's a lot more still to come. Obviously, Congress has had hearings, as you know, and a lot of that is still classified. I think the question of how much can we declassify and how much can be released depends on what the individual countries know. So if a country has a smoking gun, uh, that might be a little difficult. If, if countries are just grappling with it and say, we've got some fascinating reports, uh, then, then they can disclose, as the United Kingdom has. Chris, how do other countries around the world differ from the U.S. when it comes to UFOs and how they report them and whether or not they release any of this information to the public? Uh, I think the urge to secrecy in the United States, you know, is longstanding. It actually goes back to ground zero for UFOs, which was Roswell, 1947. We now know that that metallic object, this deflated, seen in a field by a rancher and his son, was actually a high-altitude weather balloon uh, or balloon used to surveil possible nuclear tests by the Soviets. And the Americans just didn't want that to be public in 1947, on the edge of the Cold War. So that's how it all starts. And they have national security concerns because if these objects are appearing uh, to military pilots, um, they represent a potential national security threat. So that, that's sort of where the urge to secrecy comes from, I think. We know, Chris, that American military pilots have reported sightings for years, many, many years, and in some cases have taken videos of them. Are pilots in other countries seeing similar things? Is, or is this just an American phenomenon? Well, people are starting to share data, and it's been become clear that the sightings by commercial pilots, you know, rival the numbers seen by military pilots. Uh, there is an American exceptionalism thing going on here, because if you look at the world reports of UFO sightings, there are a very large number in the United States. Um, the Washington Post article is from a correspondent working in Brazil. Brazil is a large country with a similar sized population, number of sightings there per capita is very much lower than the U.S. And the sightings fall off at the Canadian and Mexican borders, which is a little suspicious if these are things that are just in the sky. I'm curious, Nick, um, you have, we all watched as David Grush, who gave an exclusive interview to News Nation about uh, being told that there was a secret, a top secret U.S. government program that had recovered um, craft and remains of non-human origin. He also testified before Congress. Um, but these programs are so secret that the congressmen that they were testifying to didn't even know about it. Um, so it, it, much less who was funding it. So in that case, you've got to wonder, you know, it's, it, it's not just is this information public, even within the government, there appears to be lots of secrets. Absolutely. The U.S. intelligence community has 18 constituent parts to it, and there are suggestions that some of this have, has been taken outside of government altogether and put in the private sector, not least to take it further outside the scope of the Freedom of Information Act. But the intelligence community inspector general and Congress are working hard as we speak to try and validate some of the claims that have been made by David Grush and others. Other whistleblowers are coming forward. And of course, there are multiple UAP provisions drafted in the new defense bill. So there's a lot more to come. Do we know? I mean, if, if this program exists, who knows about it? Does the president know about it? Does the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff know about it? I think so. I, I think the president has to know in his capacity of, as commander-in-chief. 
You can't have a situation where the chairman of the Joint Chiefs comes into the Oval Office and says, Mr. President, the situation with the aliens has gone south. And the president says, what aliens? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. All right. Very interesting. Nick Pope, Chris Empey, thanks so much for being here. Good to talk to you both. Thank you. Right. Coming up, why one senator is hard. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.